President Obama is on vacation in Hawaii this morning. The first family landed in Honolulu overnight. The president did get some business done in the last few hours. He signed a bill that authorizes more than a half billion dollars for California because of the drought. Some Democrats were against that bill, calling it a giveaway. Before he left Washington, he did take a few shots at Russian President Vladimir Putin during a White House news conference. Obama stopped just short of saying Putin orchestrated Russian hacking of U.S. political sites. But he did say not much happens in Russia without Putin's approval. We now want to get a deeper look at what the president talked about with reporters. Uh, here is our own political analyst, mm -hmm. Professor Jack Pitney from Claremont McKenna College. Thanks so much for joining us again, Professor. Now, as Serene was saying yesterday before President Obama left on his Hawaii vacation, he talked to reporters talking about President Vladimir Putin and the Russian possible hacking, and he suggested hyper-partisanship in Washington is making the U.S. vulnerable to Russian influence. Let's take a look at what he said. Over a third of Republican voters approve of Vladimir Putin, the former head of the KGB. Ronald Reagan would roll over in his grave. And how did that happen? It happened in part because for too long, Everything that happens in this town, everything that's said is seen through the lens of does this help or hurt us relative to Democrats or relative to President Obama. And Professor, your take on what the president just said. Mm -hmm. uh, there's something to what he's saying. Uh, he's referring to a poll taken by YouGov and The Economist. 37 percent of Republicans have a favorable view of Vladimir Putin compared with 10 percent. Uh, just a short time ago. Uh, obviously, this is driven by partisanship, particularly uh, what's called aversive partisanship. It's not that each side is crazy about its own leadership, but they hate the other side. And we're seeing this play out in campaigns. We're seeing this play out in the halls of Congress. And it's going to be a problem for the incoming president because he's going to get a lot of pushback from Democrats, even if he were to make decisions that they would ordinarily agree with. Uh, and so uh, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, uh, this partisan atmosphere is going to be a problem for governing. You know, President Obama called for a full investigation into Russia's potential involvement in our elections. At this point, is there any evidence that they could have had some hand in the outcome of our election? Well, there's no evidence that they hacked the, poll, uh, the uh, uh, results at the polls. Uh, the question is, uh, what was their role in WikiLeaks? Did this come from Russia? Uh, Trump says he doesn't believe it was Russia. He believes it could have been some guy in his pajamas. Uh, the intelligence community says it was Russia. But here's the problem. The evidence is highly classified and it is highly technical. Uh, and so for most people, it's a question of, do you believe the word of the intelligence community? Because we don't have access to the actual evidence. Uh, and we're at Will a time- Will we ever? I doubt it, and even if we did, it's highly technical and in Russian. Uh, so a lot of people uh, uh, just, uh, the, the, uh, this kind of issue requires you to take the word of the intelligence community, and a lot of people are just inherently distrustful of government. Mm -hmm. So we may never get a, a full settlement of this issue in the public mind. Now, Donald Trump has said in the past that what's wrong with becoming friends with, with Russia, in a sense. Um, what is, is there a problem you see in the political world of, you know, getting along with everyone at this point? Well, on the one hand, uh, you want good relations with other countries, and it's true up to that point, but uh, Vladimir Putin is a dictator. Uh, he is uh, a brutal autocrat, and uh, taking too soft a line on Putin, as uh, President Obama said, is not consistent with uh, President Reagan's attitude toward uh, what was then the Soviet Union, and arguably isn't consistent with American values. Uh, so it's a judgment call every president has to make, and uh, the judgment that, pres that uh, President-elect Trump is taking is highly controversial. Shifting gears a little bit to the China issue, we heard President Obama yesterday uh, say that he called into question Trump's uh, one China policy, or he, Trump was questioning that. We do have a, a soundbite of President Obama talking about that. Let's go ahead and listen to that. This goes to the core of how they see themselves. Uh, and uh, their reaction on this issue uh, could end up being very significant. That doesn't mean that you have to adhere to 
everything that's been done in the past, it does mean that you've got to think it through and have planned for potential reactions that they may, they may, uh, they may engage in. And of course, this is in response to Trump taking that phone call from Taiwan's president and now his uh, stance on the one China policy. What's your take on that? Professor? Well, the one China policy has been in place since the 1970s under Republican and Democratic administrations alike. It involves a lot of diplomatic ambiguity. Uh, now, President Trump uh, constitutionally has the power to change that policy. The question is, has he thought through the consequences? Uh, China is taking aggressive actions in the South China Sea. And if you're uh, talking about aggressive actions by a nuclear-powered uh, large country, uh, those consequences could be severe indeed. Uh, and so we have to uh, worry that the president-elect has, has really thought through uh, what will happen next. Uh, China moves aggressively. What will the United States do then? Uh, one would hope that he has a plan in place for dealing with those consequences. All right, President Obama now on vacation in Hawaii. I'm sure he hopes things stay calm for a little <laughs> while while he's there in the holidays. Thanks so much, Professor. Thanks. Thanks.